Bitcoin briefly topping 50,000 for the first time since May. Joining us now is Tom Farley, chairman and CEO of Far Peak Acquisition Corp, incoming CEO of Bullish Crypto Exchange, which announced plans to go public via SPAC. Uh, Tom, great to see you as always. Thanks for joining us. Great to see you. I miss you, Will. I miss you, Sarah. Well, we, I thought you were going to give that just to me because I'm in London. But no, you, you miss us both. I, I get it. Uh, very understandable. Uh, I miss Sarah as well. Anyway, let's get to, to the point at hand, Tom, and, and discussing your, your upcoming uh, uh, listing. But, but my first big picture question on this is, how long have you been super constructive on the crypto space? Is it something that you only got converted to over the last year or two? Have you been a believer for a while? You know, 2012... Uh, we were starting to wonder in the exchange space, was this new kind of blockchain thing a potential risk or, or threat to our business? And a friend of mine, Danny Romero, said, hey, I, I've, I've got some buddies. They're starting a company, and I, I think you'd find it really interesting. And this company turned out to, to be an exchange called Coinbase. And he introduced me and said, you know, they're going to be working on blockchain and and." and exchange technology, and would you like to learn more? And I, I jumped in with both feet. We did a $10 million-ish investment on behalf of the New York Stock Exchange in early 13, I think was the date, Will. Uh, I board information rights for that company and really started to learn the crypto space and fall in love with it. And uh, it just took me a full kind of eight years to devote my entire working life to it, which is w what the plan is here with, with Bullish. And why is bullish different from, from what's out there already? You know, in many ways, bullish is the kind of anti-traditional crypto change. So first of all, we're trying to bridge the metaverse of digital assets with traditional finance. And, and not just that, but we're, we're going to bridge the worlds of CFI or centralized exchanges and digital assets and DeFi and the many services and many interesting things going on there. So tangibly, the, the, first, the first way we're different, Wilf, is... We're actually going to underpin every one of our currency pairs that we list with something called a, a liquidity pool or an automated market maker. And then the second thing that makes us unique is on the day the deal closes, uh, we're going to have a substantial balance sheet. So the price of, it depends on the price of, of crypto. And some days certainly Bitcoin goes up and Bitcoin goes down. Right now, you know, it's uh, uh, post closing the balance sheet size will be over $8 billion dollars. And we're going to take that balance sheet, as opposed to just kind of hoarding it for ourselves or, or for our shareholders. We're going to reinvest it in our business, actually invest in those liquidity pools and create really chunky uh, liquidity that, they, that we think will be attractive, not just for retail, but for institutions in the digital asset space. These automated market makers are, are really the number one uh, innovation in DeFi. What you hear about, spoken about is DeFi. They've on the Ethereum blockchain, the, 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 their most days, the number one uh, used application. And we're going to use that really great innovation in DeFi and apply that to tradi more traditional exchange architecture. It sounds a little complicated. Uh, there's a headline today or just a few days ago, uh, Tom, that crypto's DeFi projects aren't immune to regulation, according to the SEC's Gary Gensler. How much of your of your new job, do you think, is going to be taking experience from the old job dealing with the SEC and, and battling and lobbying and, and just dealing with regulation, which is changing by the week with, with so many different regulators from around the world trying to approach this crypto issue? Yeah, I think, uh, Sarah, I was just saying to a colleague this morning that strategy in crypto is regulation. It's understanding regulation. It's understanding where regulation is going. I think my personal experience having run uh, over, I don't know, maybe a dozen regulated exchanges in my career uh, across multiple uh, jurisdictions will give, give me a pretty good handle on that. But anybody who tells you they really understand how regulation is going is to play out is, uh, is, is arrogant or, or, uh, or ignorant. Uh, but the, the truth of the matter is this space is going to get more regulated. It's going to get regulated by more regulators. And so that's how we're thinking about Bullish. We're starting uh, as a regulated exchange. Uh, we want to be adults in the room. We want to behave as a very, very mature business model that will attract institutions. Because I, I think our biggest, you know, two kind of two kind of things that we think are going to happen in crypto. One is going to be more regulated, and two, volumes and, and participation from institutions are going to increase. And we want to be the exchange that they come to.